Hello, I'm Sarah Allen and I attend the Capital Area Center Community of Christ in Lansing, Michigan. I am a pastor and a 70 at that congregation. We have a pastor of three people who help us in what we uh, have envisioned to do for our congregation. Um, At Capital Area, we got involved many years ago of being creating a green team for our congregation. And in that, we decided what would what do we want to do to be more environmentally minded uh, to live out the sacredness of creation within our congregation. And within that green team, we came up with a bunch of things to do, a big list, and we have successfully done several things. We have uh, changed out the light bulbs. We put motion sensor lights in the bathrooms so that when we leave, if, if someone goes in there, if that's not a problem, they turn off on their own eventually, which helps save a lot of energy. When we are able to do potlucks, we try to encourage our people to bring their own plates and utensils so that we can uh, not have throw away. We do a hot dog Wednesday each week where we hand out uh, hot dogs to the neighborhood. This last week we handed out 180 hot dogs to about 150 people. And while we do that, we have a bin for trash and then we have a bin for water bottles and uh, pop cans. In Michigan, we get 10 cents for each can. And so it's really important that we uh, get our cans, not just get our cans back for us, but just in general, it makes it, it makes it a very good incentive to recycle. As we're doing hot dogs, we do all of the recycling of the cardboard and bags and everything that we can. We definitely try to recycle all of that. During hot dogs, we also do, uh, we hand out used clothing and shoes to the neighbors for free. They come and they take what they can use and oftentimes there's um, toys and all kinds of different things, food also, anything kind of that people want to bring, we hand that out, which is nice to have, uh, you know, items that are not needed by someone else to be able to pass on to other people. We also have a little book library for books that is outside and so people can get the uh, free books from there as well. They can drop them off but they can also take them as well. We, in the multipurpose room, we have set up a recycling station where we have a bunch of different trash cans that take either pop cans, water bottles, or all kinds of recycling. So we have that and we are also trying with that to educate our community around us that recycling matters. And so we do that um, as one of our ways of educating our community as they come in they also know then they see the signs that it's important to recycle. We have put water saving faucets on our faucets in the building. We have set back thermostats in most rooms and we've put five inch thick laminated foam walls and eight inch thick ceiling panels in the sanctuary. The last item that we did is we have leased solar panels. So oftentimes people will think to um, that they want to put solar panels on their building or, you know, oftentimes people put them on their house. But in our community, we went the option of leasing the solar panels because in our community, the energy companies were uh, this inter particular energy company was offering to have people lease panels for, I believe, 25 years. And so that we put a certain amount down for each panel. And instead of having it installed in our building, which then we would be in charge of the maintenance and we would be in charge of upkeep. And then, you know, maybe in time they don't work or, or whatever. Uh, instead of going that route, we decided to go this route so that all the maintenance and all the t up, taking care of it and all that kind of thing was set for the, um, can't even think of the name of it. 
So all of the maintenance was for and would be put on to the energy company themselves. So we leased and raised money and we said within our budget that we would do a certain amount and so uh, people could pledge and say they wanted to uh, buy a certain amount of panels and we figured out how many and I believe it was around 32 panels would be what would cover our entire building for the for, to cover all of our energy and by the time it was done we had I think I don't remember the number exactly because I wasn't fully involved from the beginning but uh, we had said I think that we would do maybe nine or ten or something like that and by the time we were done our gracious givers had covered all of them and I'm emotional because what a what a blessing it is to be in our community that we take the sacredness of creation so seriously and we care so much we had a, a wonderful generous um, several people that donated with one particular person that's no longer with us um, that saw the um, the benefit and the the importance of putting money into the solar panels so I would encourage anyone to um, just think all the ways of that you use energy or the ways that you you know think about Think about the air that you're breathing or the water that's around you. What you know, think about the environmental impacts that are surrounding and and affecting your community and get involved. Find those find those um, organizations, find those those ways that you can get involved and uh, do the things within your own building, uh, within your, your own homes, within your own community, but also find find those ways that you can also impact your community by helping others getting involved in finding the ways that we can um, work towards the environmental injustices that are happening um, within with within all aspects of our lives so i just encourage you to get involved and uh, find the ways that you can can make a difference um, that can affect the sacredness of our creation we're also uh, very 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 involved in a community organizing group called Action of Greater Lansing. That group is ecumenical as well and has a bunch of different um, faith-based groups that come together that work on uh, legislature work, uh, all kinds of things that are working to help our community. Within that, we have one of the task forces is the Environmental Justice Task Force, which I am the chair of. and multiple other members of our church are also on that task force and we get together once a month and meet and discuss what it is we want to uh, work towards in terms of community action and community organizing and just getting involved in the community and making sure that we are getting ourselves involved so that we know what's going on with environmental injustices and um, so that we can connect with our legislators if it means we write letters or all that kind of stuff um, I just recently went to a town hall that was put on by our representative and um, she had a panel of four different people that were all from different areas of the city of Lansing, the environmental section to uh, people that work for the state, the environmental, uh, for the environmental aspects of the state and she had a wonderful panel that we got to learn about what was going on and also learning that we were going to have other things environmental aspects um, that would be ways that we could get involved and so it's just one of the many ways that we are involved in trying to find ways to help our community with environmental projects it's really important to find out what's going on in your community, especially when it comes to legislative features and legislative things that are going on. And with community organizing, uh, when you find groups that are doing environmental work, uh, like the one that we are in, Action of Greater Lansing, our involvement means that any time that something is going on environmentally or in some other aspect, we can come together because we're this group that's that's organizing stuff and we can immediately get to our get our information out to a whole lot of other people and that means that when we want to have something um, 
we, when we want to affect something that's going on with the environment, environment, we can quickly get to more people. And that's important because more people and more letters, letters to your legislators means action. And that's what's really important is for things that are affecting our community and those environmental injustices that need to be taken care of to safeguard people and safeguard our environment can get out to more people. And that's why it's important for us to get involved. You might have heard of a little town called Flint, which is not necessarily little, but you've probably heard of Flint, Michigan, where we've had a major water crisis. And now we have another one in Michigan in that's called Benton Harbor. It's over near Lake Michigan. But these water crises continue to pop up where our legislators are not really doing what they need to be doing. Uh, legislators and and um, pause. Legislators and leaders in our communities are not doing what need to be done. And that is where we come in. We are the people that we need to take care of one another and we need to make sure that we hold our leaders accountable and we hold them accountable by writing letters and and calling them and getting in touch with them and just encouraging them to to do better. It's not okay to be poisoning people because we just choose not to let people know that something's not right with the water. Here in Michigan, I just learned not too long ago that um, one of the major users of water in our state is agriculture. I'm in the middle of Michigan and my water from this city eventually ends up in Lake Michigan. And that's kind of how it probably works for most of the state. At some point, it trickles its way down to one of our Great Lakes since we're surrounded by water. Water that we use runs off from those agricultural crops and it goes into Lake Michigan. Or it goes into our own drinking water. And it's just not, it's not what we should be having done to our water. And it's really important for us to get involved and to not just sit back and let this happen. If this is happening in Michigan, I can guarantee you it's happening all over the place. And it's our responsibility to get involved and understand what's going on with our water. And if we know that something, just like in Flint, those people knew their water wasn't okay. You don't drink brown water. And it is our responsibility to make sure that people's water is is safe to drink and just because it's not coming from your tap doesn't mean it's not your responsibility to get involved if somebody else is drinking brown water it's it's my responsibility to get involved so i challenge you to get involved to make sure that this does not continue to keep happening we have a whole lot of little kids in michigan that are going to have lifelong lifelong issues because they've been exposed to lead and there were people in charge that did not care enough for them and that's unacceptable. If we're gonna be a peace church, peace means making sure that people aren't sick because somebody else didn't care.